We're gonna walk you through the installation of your new reverse osmosis system. Installing fresh, clean drinking water in your home is easy. For setup, we've included a faucet, all the filters you need, and a tank. You'll find First, clear your installation space and make sure you have the room you need for all system components. The system uses quick connect tubing. First, we're gonna show you how to connect, lock, remove, and cut these tubes. To connect tubing, push the tube into the fitting, straight and level with the collet. The collet is this small moving piece at the end of the fitting. The tubing will go 5 eighths of an inch into the collet before the lock is activated. Pull on the tube to make sure the lock has activated. Once the tubing is locked, use a locking clip to secure the connection by sliding the open end of the clip between the collet and fitting. To remove a tube, first remove the locking clip. Just pull the clip away from the connection. Then, hold the collet down while pulling out on the tube. Some system fittings have color-coded plugs you will need to remove before you connect tubing. You remove them the same way. Before cutting any tubing, make sure you know the final length you need. Cuts should be made with a razor blade against a flat surface. Your cut must be straight or your tubing may leak and will need to be cut again. Find your cold water supply and turn it off completely. If you have a single handle faucet, turn off your hot water valve. Release any pressure by opening the cold water flow on your sink. The feed adapter can be used for 3 8 or half inch plumbing sizes. For 3 8 inch connections, attach the adapter nut like so. For half inch connections, attach the adapter nut on the opposite side. You can secure the adapter valve either directly to the cold water valve or further up the line. Keep the feed adapter in the closed position until installation is finished. Secure the feed adapter with your adjustable wrench. Use the proper drill bit and drilling method for the material you're drilling. Porcelain or granite may need special drill bits. First, find a good location for your RO faucet. Any flat surface where drilling a hole will not damage pipes or wiring will work. Use your power drill and half inch drill bit to make a hole for your RO faucet. You can also use an existing hole of the appropriate size. Put the small rubber washer, the base plate, then the large rubber washer through the stem to the base of the faucet. Then put the faucet stem through the hole. Make sure your faucet sits in the middle of the hole. Under the counter, put the plastic washer, lock washer, then hex nut onto the stem. Make sure they are secured all the way to the top. Take your quarter inch blue tubing and push the faucet adapter onto the tube. Tighten the faucet adapter onto the faucet stem. The drain saddle can fit onto any one and a half inch straight length of pipe before your P-trap. If you have a garbage disposal, install the saddle before it. Mark where your saddle will go with a pencil and use your quarter inch drill bit to drill a hole at your mark. Be careful to only drill through one side of the pipe. Take the connection half of the drain clamp 
and attach the foam gasket lined with the hole on the inside of the clamp. Insert nuts into the other half of the drain clamp. Put both halves together on the pipe aligned with the hole you drilled. Secure the clamp to the pipe with the bolts. Take the top part of the system and tighten the membrane housing cap by hand or with your smaller housing wrench. Stand the filter housings in the correct order. Look to make sure that the O-rings are in the place on each housing. Attach the bottom filters to the top of the system by hand. Then tighten the housing with your large filter housing wrench. Screw a male elbow into the right side of the system. Twist until the elbow is tight and facing downwards. Push the white tubing into the elbow. Next, screw a male elbow into the left side of the system. Twist until the elbow is tight and faces upward at an 11 o'clock angle. Push the red tubing into the elbow. Place your system in its permanent location. Position the leak stop valve beside the system on the cabinet floor. Use the screws to secure it in place. Connect the red tubing to the feed water valve. Connect the other end to the in part of the leak stop valve. Connect the white tube from the sediment filter to the out part of the leak stop valve. Unwrap a pad, place it inside the stop valve, then close the valve. Wrap the stem on the tank with eight to 10 layers of Teflon tape. Then screw the tank valve onto the stem. Place the tank in the desired location. It can sit upright or on its side. Connect the yellow tubing to the PAC filter on the system. Then connect the yellow tubing to the tank valve. Do not look directly at the UV bulb when it's powered on. When handling the UV bulb, make sure to only touch the white ceramic portion on the bulb. Unscrew the cap from the UV housing. Put the O-ring about 3 fourths of an inch from the opening of the tube. Rest the tube against the cap, then screw the cap onto the end of the housing. Connect the bulb to the 4-pin connector. Then, insert the bulb through the cap into the quartz tube. Secure the cover over the metal cap. Connect the black tubing to the flow restrictor. Then, connect the black tubing to the drain saddle. Connect the blue tubing from the RO faucet to the PAC filter. You should have completed the other connections earlier in the video. Make sure all connections are complete and secure before moving on. Use red tubing to connect the feed water adapter to the in part of the leak stop valve. Use white tubing to connect the out part of the leak stop valve to the sediment filter. Connect the red tubing from the automatic shutoff valve to the ACB filter. Use yellow tubing to connect the PAC filter to the tank valve. Make sure all connections are secured with a locking clip. Plug the UV sterilizer into an appropriate power outlet. 
make sure the tank valve is closed. Then open the cold water valve and feed adapter valve. Turn on the RO faucet and wait up to 10 minutes for water to start dripping. Let the water flow for 5 minutes. Then turn the faucet off. Wait 10 minutes and check the system for leaks. If you find a leak, turn the feed water adapter valve off and open the RO faucet to release pressure. Make sure the tubing at the leaking connection point is fully secured and cut correctly. Pressurize the system once you have identified the problem. Once you're sure there are no immediate leaks, turn the tank valve to the open position and allow the tank to fill completely. This will take between two and three hours. The amount of time depends on the pressure and quality of your incoming water. The flow of water will stop once the tank is filled. When the tank is full, open your RO faucet and drain the stored water. Once the water flow has slowed to a trickle, close the faucet and allow the tank to fill again. You should empty two more tanks of water to flush your system and prime your filters. This will take four to six hours. Occasionally check for leaks as you fill and empty the system. Now, let the system fill one final time and sit overnight before you flush again. Once the next tank is filled, your water is ready for drinking. Check for leaks occasionally during the first week of use. Now your RO system is ready to go and you're ready to enjoy safe, clean drinking water made in your own home. For more videos, replacement filters, regular deals, and Video Shopping Network, an Amazon affiliate. To see this product on Amazon, click the link in the video description below. You'll be able to see current pricing, product reviews, and any special deals. Desktop users should see the Amazon Quick link below the video. Mobile users will need to click the little down arrow below the video first.